Hey guys, still rain and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Flip 32 F4 all-in-one Vetterfunor, I believe it's called, uh, from Ready to Fly Quads. So we'll go ahead and uh, get into the review here. As you can see, it's relatively easy to power. You just solder on your leads right down here. And you have ESC 1, 2, three and four so that's relatively easy just to solder right up there this would be the front of the board right up here and um, we're going to talk about some of the features this board has it's pretty much an all-in-one um, everything you're going to need nice clean build it uh, has a MPU 6000 gyro a lot less noisy than some of the other gyros out there so you shouldn't have any uh, vibration issues um, it's got a 5 volt 3 amp Beck. It recommends 3 amp is max. It recommends running at uh, amp and a half. So that's not too bad considering. So, um, like I said, up here you have the USB port, and this is the front of the quad. That's going to that's gonna present some issues because you're not going to have a lot of access to uh, upgrade the board or the firmware. So you're going to have to rotate this board sideways and input those parameters inside of Betaflight, which, you know, isn't too hard, but, you know, it's a little, little bit of a pain in the butt, but, you know, it's not a deal breaker there. Up here we have your S-Bus or your uh, serial receiver, FreeSky, and that is inverted. Uh, you have your, your uh, ground right there and 5 volt, so all that will be used to attach your S-Bus receiver. You have your video in, ground, video out, another ground, and a 5 volt so you could run, you know, your camera or LEDs or whatnot on it. So, relatively simple, straightforward setup on the top. Right there you have your boot button to put you into DFU mode. Here's another UART right here. Have to remove the, the plastic wrapping to get to as long as over here if you want to run uh, smart audio. Uh, I believe these two UARTs right here do not have inverted protocol so you might have to do a hack for that but unfortunately with you know a lot of F4 boards nowadays that's sort of the status quo and down here is some buzzer pads if you want to attach a buzzer or whatnot. So not overall not a bad board. Um, doesn't have an SD card reader but it does have flash capability so you can still log on the bottom here you'll see it's just relatively straightforward you got you know normal ESC chips and you have your shunt resistor right here for current sensing which is pretty awesome um, go ahead and talk about some of this board's downfalls when I first received it um, it came flashed with a version of Betaflight from April of this year of 2017. It was called uh, VGood HF4 and it was uh, Betaflight 3.1.7 which is not compatible with BL Heli 32 uh, GUI so I had no access to change any of the parameters on the ESCs or even flash them. After doing a little bit of research I found out that they've got rid of that firmware and replaced it with the, the Lux F4 uh, OSD firmware in the recent uh, 3.2 beta flight. So, you know, that wasn't listed anywhere um, that I found and had to ask around online and, and do a little bit of research and found out that that's the only way. So you're going to have to reflash your board with the, the Lux F4 OSD just to be able to use uh, BL Heli 32 and flash your ESCs and get everything properly working on there. So not not a big deal. I just wish they would have, you know, mentioned it somewhere, but it is what it is. And like I said, the other big problem that we have is is the uh, USB on the front, but rotating your board and inputting some of those parameters in the, in the beta flight is really not that big of a deal. So uh, the board weighs 22 grams, um, but, you know, you're getting rid of, your ESCs off the arms and you're getting a really clean build all you're gonna need on this is um, your VTX and your receiver 
you know, and it'll make a relatively clean build with uh, no issues. So I, I'd probably recommend running, running a low ESR capacitor down here, like a 35 volt uh, 470, you know, down in this area to clean up some of the noise since all this power is going to be going through this board. And, um, you know, it, something like this where all the power is going through the board and the ESCs, it'll clean up your video a little bit. I'm sure it's filtered, but, you know, you might still get lines. So I'm going to be running a capacitor on this. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut to flashing this board and show you the setup there. All right, guys, I'm back. We're going to go ahead and show you how uh, what kind of firmware comes on this in Betaflight and how to flash it to fix it. So the BL Heli 32 ESCs will work and you'll have full programming. So we'll go ahead and connect right here. Go down to the CLI. You'll type in version. And as you can see, it's got Vgood F4 uh, Beta Flight version 3.1.7 from April 3rd of this year, which is not going to work and not compatible with BL Heli 32. So go ahead and type in DFU. Go ahead and put it in DFU mode. And see right now it's not showing up in ports. And uh, what we're going to have to do is go ahead and go to Zadig and upgrade the drivers. You go to Zadig, Options, List All Devices, STM32 Bootloader should pop up. If not, it should be somewhere down here. Go ahead and reinstall driver. Driver complete, installed. That should pop up here. Go ahead and cycle the board here. There we go. DFU mode. Go to firmware flasher. We're going to get rid of the VGood HF4 because it's not compatible at all. Scroll up here. And it's the Lux F4 OSD. Go to choose firmware version and it's going to be Betaflight 3.2 RC5. Go down here to load firmware online and go ahead and flash firmware. That's pretty much going to be it for flashing the firmware. It'll erase all the old 3.1.7 stuff and throw on the 3.2. Go ahead and let it load up here. Flash just a few more minutes and I'll show you how everything works correctly. It takes a little bit to flash here. Unfortunately it's, not, unfortunately, it's not the fastest. Let's take about 30, 40 seconds or so. And we're done. So we'll go up to the welcome screen. Connect. And everything's good to go. So we'll go ahead and disconnect from here, close out Betaflight, close out Zadig, and if you haven't already, download BL Heli 32, and there you go. Everything's going to work. What you want to do here is go up to the interface, BL Heli Bootloader, the Betaflight Clean Flight interface, select that, and you can see COM3, that's what it's connected to. Go ahead and connect. None of the ESCs show up, so go ahead and hit check. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, forgot to plug in the board. You have to plug it into your main LiPo voltage, so I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Go ahead and check again there we go so everything's working correctly this wasn't working before on the uh, vgood hf4 it wouldn't even come up it was coming up with an error saying not compatible so you have to put in the lux f4 osd 
to be able to flash and set up parameters inside of a BL Heli 32. Otherwise, you can't do anything with your ESCs. You just have to go off of the defaults. So that'll be pretty much it, guys. Um, all these settings are going to be up to you to change. You know, everybody does things differently. I've already flashed these uh, a little bit earlier. Pretty, pretty easy. So that's going to be it for this flight controller overview. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and uh, leave any comments down below. Thanks, guys. See you.